we're working on fungal endophytes and what these are are, are microorganisms, fungi, that live inside plants. Um, and importantly, they're not diseases, so they don't negatively affect the plant. Um, and in many cases, some of these fungi can actually provide benefits to the plant and protect them from stresses, things like insects or nematodes or plant diseases. There's been a lot in the news lately about how important microorganisms are to human health. For instance, the, the microbes that live inside our gut. And it turns out that same thing is very true for plants. Even though they don't have guts, they do have associations with all sorts of microorganisms, bacteria and fungi, that live inside the plant and outside the plant. And, and many of these, if you get the right ones in there, can actually be beneficial to the plant. An important aspect about using endophytes or fungal endophytes to potentially protect plants is that it's not transgenic. So these are interactions that occur naturally all the time. We can go out in the field and sample cotton, for example, and find a whole bunch of different, different fungi that are living inside the leaves or living inside the roots. And it turns out that some of those um, are things that, that aren't really thought of as being plant pathogens at all. In fact, many of them are known to be insect pathogens or parasites of nematode eggs. And exactly what these are doing inside the plant up until, until very recently has been unknown. And it turns out that, that they can protect the plants. They can reduce insect reproduction or reduce nematode reproduction. And most importantly, it's an interaction that we can manipulate. So we can culture these fungi outside the plant and then inoculate them back to the plant to live inside the plant and we've shown very recently that we can even do it at a field scale with positive impacts on, on yield in terms of cotton and also negative impacts in terms of, of insects uh, feeding on the plants. Manipulating fungal endophytes within plants is relevant to producers because it's, it's another tool that we have to simultaneously increase yields while reducing chemical inputs that we need to manage things like insects or nematodes or, or plant pathogens. Among the benefits of using fungal endophytes to protect plants is that this is a, a non-chemical method. So it's effectively a, a form of biological control, but we're manipulating relationships that are already occurring out there in the field. We're just, we're just scaling it up and, and effectively biasing it to make sure that the good microorganisms that we want to be in the plant are present uh, and performing the, the functions within the plant that actually protect it. So for a consumer, what we might see, or a producer, might see lower costs in terms of, of chemical inputs and, and the benefits would be, be to the environment. It turns out that they've been well studied. So some of them are even commercially available as biological control agents against insects or nematodes, for example. But people have been thinking about it in a different way than the way that we're using them as endophytes. So for the insect pathogens, for example, you can go on the internet right now and, and buy a jar of spores and the way that they're typically applied is as a pesticide. So they're sprayed out topically onto the plants and the idea is that the insect will come in contact with a spore, the spore will germinate and, uh, and give the insect a disease that then goes on to kill the insect. And this interaction is well known, well known, well studied. But it turns out that there's a, an unexplored aspect of many of those fungal pathogens life cycle. So they don't just exist as insect pathogens, they can also exist inside plants as what we're calling endophytes and what they're doing when they're in the plant and how they're negatively affecting insects for example when they're in the plant is really only just becoming um, is really only just coming to light. The idea that we can manipulate fungal endophytes within plants is not limited to any one plant. So for example we can take one isolate or one strain of, of fungi that we know can can go inside a plant and live as an endophyte and we can inoculate it to a range of plants. For example, corn, wheat, cotton, beans, um, across the board. So these are very generalist interactions that we're talking about to inoculate or infect plants, if you will, with, with fungal endophytes. We can do it as a seed treatment, as soil treatments, and as foliar treatments, and, and different combinations of those work better in some plants and some fungi than others. So once we get the process optimized, we'll be able to take it to, to really larger scale field trials than we've currently done and, and ideally, um, ultimately, applications that will benefit producers on a larger scale. So far, we've shown that, that we can manipulate the presence of certain fungal endophytes in the field, um, in field trials. In those field trials, we've shown that um, insects feeding on the plants that are, are colonized by the endophytes are negatively affected 
and probably most importantly we've had higher yields in plants in which we've we've manipulated the fungal endophyte community. Probably an additional very important thing is that we're getting even stronger effects of fungal endophytes against nematodes than we are insects and we're in our first series of field trials. We have three different field trials um, around the state where we're looking at the effects of specific fungal endophytes against uh, root knot nematode and reniform nematode.